What's up YouTube, ODST General back again with another InterSystem News video. Uh, my first video in quite a while, guys. It's uh, been almost a month, I think, since my last video release. I didn't actually check the dates, but uh, I've been working for about three weeks straight. I had uh, a couple of days off, one of which I actually ended up working, playing catch-up on, on work, and then... Uh, yeah, now uh, my, my boss has coronavirus, so I have to cover for him, so that's on top of doing my own job. So, yeah, things are continuing to be super crazy for me right now, but uh, I do have this weekend off, and I wanted to get this video out to you guys because a lot of cool stuff has released for Arma Halo, and uh, I wanted to talk about it. Now, with that being said, because I have been just absolutely busy for the last uh, you know month or so, last several weeks... Uh, there's going to be almost certainly stuff missing from this video that was released that I didn't talk about. Uh, I may have gotten a couple of things wrong, and there's some images and stuff which I just intentionally haven't included because of time constraints. Uh, with that being said, if I do miss out on anything, if I get anything incorrect, let me know in the comments below, and I will uh, endeavor to correct that in the next video, or pin it in you know the comments, whatever. So anyways, let's go ahead and talk about it, starting off with Operation Trebuchet. So, starting with Operation Trebuchet, Spartans are getting a big overhaul, at least some of them are. The Mark 5B is getting new textures, I believe possibly even new materials, a big overhaul there. No model changes, anything like that, but the uh, Spartan models will be getting hidden selections added, so you'll be able to texture Spartans, uh, which includes the visor, which is going to be really awesome. Uh, this isn't a massive change, but it is a welcome change. The older Spartan models that we had just really didn't stack up, in my opinion, to the Mark V or the Mark VI textures and materials. Um, they just felt like they were on a, a completely different level all their own. So this is a welcome update for me. I'm excited to see that. Uh, they are also getting a new helmet, which is the Commando Helmet, which is from the Gamma mod. And of course, if you guys have been around in the community for a little while, you'll remember Gamma. They had a whole bunch of Spartan helmets, which were created for uh, Marines and Standard Infantry. But this has been donated to the Operation Trebuchet dev team and will work for Spartans once it gets added in. Uh, so we have an uh, image of that in Substance Painter. Uh, fully textured and ready to go. I can't imagine it's going to take super long to get that integrated because it was already integrated into Arma at one point. It's just getting it uh, upscaled and working properly with Spartans is really the trick. Uh, of course, I don't really know what's on the development team's plate right now, so it could be a longer process than that. Um, speaking of updating things, Nido Vizard also updated some textures on the Pelican, which isn't the new Pelican I've been waiting for for years, but it is, again, a welcome update. Um, the Pelican is probably the oldest asset in the Operation Trebuchet mod at this point, and uh, it really shows, especially with the textures and stuff in there, are really lacking and uh, just don't hold up that well uh, compared to other assets that have released since. Now, this isn't going to revolutionize the Pelican by any means or really make it feel like a super new asset, but the changes are welcome. Um, they do improve it a fair bit, in my opinion, just looking at the uh, the old versus the new, so I am happy to see these changes. And uh, I believe those were actually implemented a little while back already in development build. I'm not sure if they've made it to live yet. Um, I forgot to check if they were on live, but uh, yeah, welcome changes for both of those things. Uh, we also have a small update from Lee uh, regarding the longsword. Uh, a little bit of a uh, image of it here in uh, Substance Painter. It says it is getting near completed state to the point that it's ready to be implemented in game. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the process for implementing this into game will be. Uh, the code for the original longsword still exists, so they may just slap that on there and modify it as need be to adjust to new animations and things of that nature. But I am uncertain what that process is actually going to look like or what route they want to take with that. So, uh, you know, again, I'm sure some of you guys are really excited to see a longsword. Um, a lot of you guys probably have never gotten to use the longsword because the old one was removed such a long time ago now. Um... But even if you have, I'm sure it's going to be a welcome asset once it returns. 
And speaking of the return of assets, or in a sense of return of assets, Nido Wizard has updated Operation Trebuchet dev build with three new uh, superstructures, which I cannot unfortunately remember who developed these. They seem very familiar. I'm sure I've seen them as work in progress assets. Um, I can't remember if these were Bradsters or if somebody else who is no longer on the dev team had worked on these. I can't remember if like these were Kenny's or something. Um, if somebody from one of the dev teams wants to let me know who did these structures, I'll pin it in the comments. So that way we can credit them properly. Uh, but nonetheless, yeah, new structures coming to Operation Trebuchet dev build, actually already in dev build. Um, and these are going to be getting implemented into the new Mombasa map as well, which we'll talk more about a little bit later once we get to the community stuff. Um, there is a very, very minor interior in one of these buildings, which you guys may have seen screenshots for, but you can't actually enter into any of these buildings. Um, though they do have roofs and stuff which you can walk on land on with vehicles and stuff like that. Um, really cool structures though, really like them, but yeah, they are massive as you guys can probably tell looking at them stacked up against the city here in uh, Arcadia, I believe this is. And then that brings us to Operation Trebuchet First Contact. So First Contact had a couple of minor updates teased out for it, uh, specifically the Concussion Rifle, which was shown off for the first MEU as well as their own uh, weapon that they were working on. Uh, the Operation Trebuchet dev team is also working on a Concussion Rifle, which they will be adding into the mod. Uh, additionally, they are also working on a new variant of Jackals, which have uh, shoulder shield pauldrons. Try saying that ten times fast. And uh, yeah, they are kind of based off the skirmishers, and it's a pretty neat thing. I, you know, of course, we still need the, the Jackals to get properly finished and everything, so that's still probably a little ways out. Um, but once this does get added, you know, of course, having that variation, having these different types of jackals and everything is going to be a welcome addition. So I'm excited for that regardless. And then that brings us to what is probably the most exciting news of this video, which is the creation and the release of Operation Trebuchet Precursors. Now, Precursors is a official expansion to Operation Trebuchet in the same sense that First Contact is. Uh, unlike First Contact, this is being more loosely developed away from the main core Operation Trebuchet dev team. This is being developed under Devourer King and his team. Um, and it is its own standalone mod. It does require Operation Trebuchet and First Contact to function. Um, but, you know, of course, that and CBA as well, I suppose. But aside from that, it is a standalone mod and it is really neat now i've got a little bit of a tease for you guys here just showing off some of the basic stuff for it a lot of videos and images were released during my hiatus um there's a lot more i want to talk about with this mod but i feel like that's better suited for its own video so once i actually have time to sit down and do a proper video that's when i would like to cover uh the precursors mod now with that being said there is uh, there's some minor issues, I guess, some bugs that still withstand in the mod currently. Uh, things like units duplicating uh, once being taken over by an infection form uh, on occasion. Not every time, but sometimes that happens. Uh, things like not all of the infection forms wanting to attack, I've noticed. So th there's some issues. They're working their way through. Uh, if you guys want to check out the mission, uh, great mission to check out, and I haven't really fully checked out myself yet, is uh, Requiem for Mona Lisa, I believe is what it's called, and that is a mission by Nido Wizard, uh, based off of the Mona Lisa video from Halo, in which the Flood take over a prison ship and the UNSC gets involved. Um, it's not a direct adaptation of that story, but it's inspired by it. It's a really cool mission, what little I did play of it and uh, definitely would recommend checking it out just based off the small amount I played of it. But definitely Operation Trebuchet Precursor's really cool stuff. Adds in infection forms, carrier forms, uh, human combat forms, elite combat forms. It adds in structures, so there's different biomasses. They've got uh, flood doors, flooring, uh, different flood rooms inspired by the various Halo games, specifically Halo 3 largely, but yeah. Really cool stuff. I really dig it. So let's go ahead and then transition into community. And it's going to be kind of hard to follow up with community, I think, compared to the Flood. 
but there's still a lot of stuff uh, that the community is working on that's really cool stuff. So we'll start off with 19th Fleet, and they are primarily continuing their work on their ship project, uh, following in the steps of Project Shipyard. Uh, they have been putting a big focus on their ship interiors, finishing off their halberd class, which of course a couple of those already exist in the community. Uh, they're still doing their own version of that. Uh, we're seeing other ship interiors such as hangar bays, uh, vehicle bays, uh, engineering sections, bridges, all sorts of different rooms like the armory, all this various different areas. It's really cool, uh, really exciting stuff, and I'm excited to see that stuff all get added. Also, as kind of a side note, it almost feels like, but still a really big thing for a lot of you guys, they are also working on their own set of ODST armor. Now, I gotta be honest, I've been looking at this armor and it looks super familiar to me and I cannot place it. Um, it maybe it's like Downfall is where I recognize this from, I cannot recall, but they are working on this custom set of ODST armor, which it might just be like their own custom design that they've pulled out of the air and they're just going with, I don't know, I could be wrong. Still, it's really cool stuff. It's not the Halo 2 anniversary, which I've been waiting for. Hopefully, we'll still get to see it. Um, but it is something that they're working on, and if you're a fan of ODSTs, having the extra armor as an option, I'm sure it's going to be a welcome change for many of you guys. Now, I should have shown that off first, because then I kind of segued from the ship parts to Project Shipyard, because Project Shipyard has also released a couple of things. Now, they don't have as much to show as the 19th Fleet, unfortunately. However, with that being said, they are still working on the mod, they are still plugging away, and, uh, you know, it's, of course, still going to be welcome additions, even if they end up releasing the same stuff. Having this as a standalone mod for these ship parts is going to be something I think a lot of community members are going to like. A lot of people have stated that, well, they love that all these units and stuff are working on various different mods, additions like the Covenant for the first MEU, uh, various armors and stuff for the 19th Fleet, and various other expansions between various different units. Uh, one thing I often hear is that people don't really like having to download the unit mods because there's a lot of additional uh, resources that have to get downloaded, like uh, custom armors and stuff like that, that nobody, you know, outside of the unit necessarily cares about too much or really wants to have to download the extra data. So having a separate mod with these ship parts, even if it's the exact same ship parts, which it's not necessarily going to be, but even if it was, you know, that's going to be a welcome thing for many people, I think. So we do have uh, Project Shipyard and they are still plugging away. Um, for the most part, it is very much what we've already seen, which is the, the bulkheads, uh, you know, the door sections. We do get another look at their ventilation tunnels section, whatever you want to call it, and a very, very minor look at their work in progress armory. So that's cool stuff to be sure. Now, talking about units again, uh, we're going to shift back and go back to the first MEU. And the first MEU is working on some really cool stuff too. Uh, probably one of the more exciting things for me personally in this is the Pelican. And as I said, the Pelican is one of the oldest things in Operation Trebuchet. A uh, few people have started projects with Pelicans that just never ended up getting finished. And it's something I want to see somebody finish because I desperately want a new Pelican model. Uh, it's one of the most used assets in Operation Trebuchet. It's, it's something that I personally have used a lot. A lot of missions use them. A lot of just units use them in ops. They are very efficient vehicles for transporting large amounts of people um, and because they're such a big part of the the asset base um, I really desperately want to see this so hopefully we'll see this and get completed but this is being worked on by bins and uh, it's you know of course a, a really cool model still you know it's not textured or material or anything the model work still going on as far as I know uh, but I am excited to see this thing being worked on and do very much want to see it completed, so finish it, please. Um, yeah, and then aside from that, the, the first MU is also working on ship parts. They're working on their frigate. Uh, the interior for it is being worked on, so we have a few different shots of that. Uh, we also have an update on their spire, which is apparently textured and materialed, it looks like, so I'm guessing that's very near to completion. Uh, I don't know if it's just going to be a static structure, because if that's the case, it's probably almost nearly completely done. Um, if it's going to have some functionality, it might take a little bit longer to get out, but again, I'm not really sure what the plan is there for that. 
However, speaking of functionality, the first MEU also shared a video, which I almost missed this and I'm glad I didn't. The first MEU is working on a script to make plasma grenades actually stick to things, which uh, something the uh, you know Operation Trebuchet dev team tried to do, but they had some issues with it. Um, I guess the first MEU has figured out a script or at least something that they're happy enough with that it works. Um, these things will stick to players, they'll stick to vehicles, and they'll stick to buildings. They'll stick to pretty much whatever you want to throw it onto and stick it onto. And uh, yeah, it's something I'm really excited for. The uh, the plasma grenades just, uh, you know, if they're not, they're not bad, but it definitely feels like you kind of miss out on them with them not actually sticking to anything. So the fact that they actually now stick to things... I think is going to make these things a whole lot more popular. And I'm sure that the Covenant units are probably going to go wild for this. So I'm excited to see it too as well. And then wrapping us up, we have the new Mombasa project, which is getting a bit of an update. I don't know if they've pushed any of these updates to Steam Workshop. Uh, if you're on their Discord, you can, of course, access the master file through there if you have access to that. Um, which has the unstable versions of these. But uh, this is part of the reason Nido Vizard had updated and added in the skyscrapers to Operation Trebuchet dev build is because he is looking to add those buildings into the new Mombasa project. So we've got a few different shots of some of the work in progress areas for that. And it all looks great, of course. You know, some of it's still very much work in progress, but very cool nonetheless. And with that being said, guys, I do believe that is everything. Now, as I said, there is some things I didn't include. Uh, specifically, the, uh, like I said, the Spartans getting extra hidden selections and stuff. There was some extra Spartan images, which I just haven't downloaded. But in the interest of just getting this done and out, so you guys, um, it, even though it doesn't take too long, just it's extra stuff I have to edit and throw in here and save on my computer and transfer back and forth. Uh, we've skipped over that. So if there's anything else I missed, let me know in the comments below, guys. Of course, if you have any questions, let me know that in the comments below. And of course, like always, guys, I want to know what are you guys most excited for from this video here? What do you guys want to see the most going forwards with Operation Trebuchet or any of these other mods? What do you guys want to see added into Arma that hasn't been worked on yet? Let me know in the comments below, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next one.